You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. To It's All About You with your host, Dr. Martha Latz. Dr. Martha will offer various solutions that will expand your horizons, offer solid possibilities, and guide you through developing the skills needed for your desired outcome in everyday life. So now, please welcome the host of It's All About You, Dr. Martha Latz. Happy New Year and welcome to all of you. I can say that one more time. We're broadcasting live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I am your host, Dr. Martha Furr. It's all about you. Coming to you from the East Coast, where I have an office in South Florida. My expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, relationship, life and transition coach, and all things to do with communication, whether at work, with your family, or with your friends. We have we are just coming to the end of the first full week of 2019, and we have been looking at what was a new calendar, but it didn't last long, did it? Those blank days began to fill up fast, and we're, we're rescheduling and scheduling already within the first few days of 2019. However, what's not fading and what is ringing loudly in our ears are the criticisms from the holidays, spending it with our close friends and family. So what do we do with all that holiday criticism or really any criticism that we have during the the year or the week um, when we receive it. Are you ready for another great show? I know you're thinking, how can a show on criticism that leads to stress, how can that possibly be a great show? And I say to you, you bet it can. So keep listening and find out and call in during my show at because the phone lines are open on this very topic. So call in at 1-866-451-1451. Remember, this is BBM Global, where the world comes to talk, and so do we. So call one at 1-866-451-1451 to be ready and be in line to ask questions or give comments. Remember, I am listening and we're going to be doing this together. So let's think about this. You know, criticism. You know, criticism is something that we all get all the time. um, And it can be stressful. But it rings especially loud and harsh during the holidays, And the reason that is, is because we are beyond tired. We're overworked, we overeat, we're overscheduled, underpaid, or not being paid at all. Part of that is normal. Part of that is not normal. You know, we always look forward that we will be being paid. All of us get that holiday blue depression and that criticism overload. Uh, and it usually lasts for a very prolonged period. Um, like for the holidays, we take vacation where it's a prolonged period, whether we travel, whether we stay home. And yes, even after the days um, off, 
the weather, sick days, uh, we are usually out of our daily routine, just coming back to it as we are now. And we're always very vulnerable to criticism. However, what I've noticed so far is that the climate of criticism and stress has been since before the holidays at an all-time high. And I know that you will agree with me because I'm also hearing those remarks about criticism or critical remarks in every area, whether it's work, whether it's social, from family members or friends. Um, But don't be overwhelmed. There are a couple of things that we're going to learn and we're going to start putting into place right now how not to be overwhelmed. So one of the things is take a very deep breath in. And I want you to let it out slowly through your nose. I want you to do that three times. And while while you're doing this, I'm going to suggest... That's right. Keep doing it. I think think about the most personal criticism that you get that you can't shake. That's right. Keep doing that. Uh, that breathing or shake for only a short period of time, only to have them come back with more friends. So you know, are you have you thought about that? Well, what do we do with all that? How do we handle that? Well. Here, here it goes. When we hear or when we rehear some of those same critical remarks, yep, and they still sing, sting, uh, sting with us, pause. I mean, really just pause right here. We're lucky enough that we will remember that what we've learned, how to distance ourselves from those stinging remarks. Because after some time reflecting on that, and remember that, when we reflect on those continual critical remarks, um, they're st- they sting and they ring less loudly in our ears. And they've lost some of their sting and gained some credibility. I know you don't want to think about that, but but it does happen. Let's be open with that. When we begin to think about these remarks, do they have merit? Did they come from people who we really admire or a situation or a department that we really admire and they're doing so well and we, we hear our, our department where we are being, crit- being criticized? Our thoughts on criticism if we really begin to do that and listen to it, begin to change to thoughts of, I don't like to admit this, but there is merit in those critical remarks. And we also can can take it to another step and say, they're usually right. Even if I don't like it, pay attention. Pay attention to that because perhaps this may be an opportunity knocking through the criticism and the contact trust that comes with the extremes of the criticism and the stress. The extreme contrast that we hear, and we hear it a lot, um, with criticism amps up expectations. This comes from extremes. We call that extremes, okay? And it's usually in the extreme. We want a shorter work week. It's not going to happen. Uh, we want to um, have a long time before, a longer time before we get home to just power down or that we don't want that long time. We want to get home sooner. Weather will re- Uh, lead us to these extremes, okay, and lead us to not keeping it real. And this is caused by, if you recall, our brain and how we process extremes. Hmm. We're not doomed, though, all right? We really are not doomed. It's just our brain exaggerating our criticisms that we receive. We become uh, our boredom, and or 
confusing, confusing being melancholy and sad, or all of them, the criticism of boredom, confusing being melancholy and sad. Like when we return to our work routine, whether it was the holidays or the vacations or just a few days off, this is exaggerated. So let's find out. This is a great place for us to pause. And we're going to find out on the other side of the break what to do about that and how to recognize what we are um, prone to do during that time. So you've been listening to Dr. Martha. It's on All About You, coming to you live from BBM Global and TuneIn Radio. And I will pick you up on the other side. Keep listening and let's find out what to do with that. Psychologist, master certified coach and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm, True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi-day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents, and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy, and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, for It's All About You, coming to you live from BBM Global and TuneIn Radio. Before the break, we were talking about how our brain is exaggerating uh, things like our critis- the criticisms we receive or give, boredom, confusing being um, uh, melancholy or sad, and that it really leads out of um, a disruption in our work routine after a vacation or a stay vacation or a few days off or personal days. And as promised, you know, we are all kind of Uh, prone to something like this. So if we're prone to being blue and um, are melancholy, I know I am at times, this may be more acute when it's coupled with, believe it or not, winter's lack of sunshine. So this is the time for us to get one of those lamps that mimic sunshine, uh, sunlight, okay? And we right now have no no lofty expectations, nothing going on, really, social gatherings, Um, not not right away. Um, The only expected one that we have coming up is Valentine's Day, and we'll cover that later in another show. Uh, But I've noticed that even commercials are pointing out to give us something to look forward to, or at least pause and give us a smile uh, about obscure unexpected things to celebrate like tomorrow is national winnie the pooh day and uh other expectate other commercials are pointing out 
uh, National Dinosaur Day or other things like that. So pay attention to that. What can we celebrate that will put a smile on our face and have us move forward? Um, So when we're talking about any topic on criticism, um, and really any type of criticism, it is linked to, ready, our being happy. The question becomes, how can I be happy while I'm being criticized or while I'm giving criticism? I don't feel good about myself, and this just stresses me out to the max. Is there such a thing as critical happy stress or stressful happiness um, uh, about um, criticism? And this has been filling, uh, filling my inbox. This has been subjects of conversations that I've had in a uh, few uh, sessions during the new year. It's in the news. It's on the Internet. So let's think about that. This is what I have found to be true, at least in my brief looking at this. I'm sure there's much more out there. But this is some of the conversations that I'm hearing in sessions. Uh, Daily life, criticism, happiness are dominating thoughts and conversations and goals. I want to be happy. And I would be happy only if, and we could start with those only ifs, only if I had a better car, only if I had a better place to live. Um, I'm so stressed at my job or with my boss or with my coworkers. Um, that if I had a different boss or a different job or different coworkers, I wouldn't be having any more stress and criticism. Well, that's not necessarily reality or true. Happiness, for me, as I've looked at it and over the course of the years, um, there's a component of criticism and there's a component of stress. It all seems to be part of the same cube that's there. You'll see happiness, you'll see criticism, you'll see stress in that cube. Um, I began re-asking myself, can criticism and stress lead to happiness And can happiness lead to stress and criticism? Are they mutually contagious? I mean, you know, you, you know, think about that. You walk in the room and if it's filled with grumpy faces or critical comments or acid tones, how do you feel and what do you do with that? Do you find yourself being drawn in and adding to that, um, moment of that energy level that's in the room and it's coming from the people that you are interacting with at that moment. So think about that. How do you feel? Well, there is a quote from John Lennon. I know I've used this before, but it seems to be apropos again here. And it's about happiness. But then as I reread it and thought about it some more, it's It's also sort of like a formula to stay away from or to lessen criticism and stress as it comes to us. The quote from John Lennon goes like this. When I was five years old, my mother always told me that happiness was key, key, the key to life. When I went to school, they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, and I wrote down happy. And they told me I don't understand the assignment. And I told them they don't understand life. That's powerful when you stop, pause, and think about that. Um, It really is. Being happy can lend itself to being stressful and leaving us open to criticism. He quoted his mom, he believed it, and he received criticism back, one that, that he didn't understand and he didn't understand the assignment. So, you know, it's there. We're always, we're always exposed to this. And yep, you heard me correctly. Happiness can be stressful, and it can lead to criticism, and there is science to back up this notion. I came across an article uh, by Dr. Merkel uh, 
who wrote Stress and Criticism is highly contagious. Think about that. Just like just like laughter, highly contagious. It, it elicits empathetic stress response by the observer. And happiness is just as in, uh, contagious from happy people in situations. Hmm. We're going to consider this. This is a great pay- place for us to pause. And you've been listening to me uh, Dr. Martha, your host, for It's All About You, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And as I come back, we're going to first consider these contagious and contagions about happiness and stress. So stay tuned, listen, and we'll find out more. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Before the break, we were talking about how stress and criticism is highly contagious, as well as happiness is highly contagious when people are happy and the situation is happy and people are laughing and um, everything is up. But let's we were considering the contagious uh, contagions of stress and criticism. Stress and con- uh, criticism become very ugly when the exposure is severe and daily, okay, for a prolonged period of time, such as uh, trauma or traumatic incident that we have been witness to or we're coming out of um, a, a situation of combat if you're in a, a military family. Stress puts many of us at risk, not only to receive it, but to pass it on. Criticism does the same thing. And the reason we can tell that is a lot of us may have digestive issues. We may be very, very tired. Just saying, think about that and look at that in your life. However, both stress and criticism is natural. It is normal. It is part of what we receive where where it is at work um, with our relationships, our daily lives out and elsewhere. But it's what we do with it, how we handle it, where we go with it. And stress and um, criticism, according to all of us health experts, uh, mental health as well as physical health, um, Look, can look at this, and the suggestion is, which sounds counter, 
counterindicated. It may not be as vile of a contagion as we think it is. It can. It may help us boost our health by making uh, ourselves aware of certain things. Surprisingly, making us he- healthier and happier and become our best fr- uh, self because we're being aware of how everything is working in our body. So here are a few ways that we can think about criticism and stress. Um, in a different way instead of a negative way, in a more positive way. Uh, It opens us up to more creativity. Um, And stress precedes and accompanies a lot of breakthroughs, new paths, new uh, ways of doing things. It makes us happy. So short bursts of stress and uh, Criticism, like playing a game with a timer or running a race or increasing our immune system equals what? Balance. And balance equals what? Happiness. So like regular exercise, that the sweaty type, you know the exercise, uh, helps us with stress. Uh, it releases endorphins, that happy, uh, that happy hormone, and helps with overall stressful cons- um uh, conditions. Now, you know, later on, I'm going to be talking about us how to put that into practice when we have full, full schedules and not enough time to go and work 40, uh, 30 minutes to 40 minutes out at a gym. Stress and criticism has been shown to help with problem solving. Now I'm going to repeat that. Stress and criticism has been shown to help with problem solving and with big decision and by illuminating our values that we do a review and are our values being honored in the decision making process that we're making or the problem that we have to solve. Happiness comes when we are listening to our internal self. Um, and stop, and and we stop, and we do something else. Like, say, let's put your decision on hold. Um, tell yourself, let's take a walk. Let's get a good night's sleep, and the answer will and plan will be there after the walk or in the morning after you wake up. And this does work. Uh, it really does. It just takes practice. For example, if you're on your job and the stress and criticism is way too high and when you avoid important and work activities, you may not, A, be feeling valued. You may not be feeling that um, your work is valued. Not only you're not valued as a person, but your work is not valued. Your schedule is full, Um you're pitch hitting for coworkers. You're uh, pitch hitting for other departments. So stop, stop, pull back, and reassess something. Gaining some quiet control over your schedule. Remember, your schedule is your schedule. Your schedule is not your schedule and everybody else's schedule. But are you living up to your schedule? Tweaking that. You may have to vent you know, when these thoughts, despite of despite your best efforts, keep popping into your brain. Um, you know, it's taking up the penthouse of the brain, and it's not. You're not even getting paid for it. It's not even paying rent, and you're just it's this there all the time. We all just need to unload things, but you can't find a person you tr- can trust. That may be the time to seek professional help, professional um, counseling. Just say, just think about that. If you find you're more positive and more refreshed and happy uh, with small, uh, consistent steps before lighting um, uh, towards lightening everything up, wait it out. Check it out. In my experience, most stressful situations appear to occur on Mondays, but you have a full schedule to deal with during that day. This is a great place for us to pause and look at what to do with Monday morning 
Wednesday and Friday. Those are high days for stress and criticism. So you've been listening to It's All About You with me, your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network. Keep listening and let's figure out and we'll talk about that, uh, what to do with um, those stressful days that we have, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Um, and we're at all. It's all about you. Before the break, we were ta- I was talking. We were thinking about the most stressful and critical days in the work week. And I have shared with you that I find it on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays, just before the weekend. And when it happens on Friday, Friday, to my opinion, is really the worst because I find that I have all weekend long to think it over and over and over again. And um, the command is stop, stop, and think about that. It's 72 hours and there is nothing there that's productive that we can do about it. So when this happens to me, and it happens uh, frequently, um, I get those thoughts, they pop into my head, and they just seem to happen just before bed. Does that happen to you? So what I've learned to do and sometimes it really works, is I thank my brain, because it's a wonderful brain, for the reminder about this, and that I will take care of it on Monday. And every time this happens, all weekend long, I say the same thing. Thank you for reminding me. I will take care of it on Monday. So by Monday, and that's a 72-hour situation, from Friday to Monday, Uh, the situation sometimes resolves itself. Don't know how it happens, but it just resolves itself. A a solution will present uh, something different that I had never thought about because I was on that gerbil wheel of the continuous thought and stress and criticism. Or it's no longer an issue. Sometimes it works well, and sometimes... uh, The stress is still there, and those um, critical, stressful thoughts are still churning in my head. I keep trying, and I have to tell you, I'm getting better. Not perfect, but I'm getting better. So you may want to try this. 
Um, it, it works wonders also for lost items. Um, they are just, you find them just before bed, you know that the solution is going to come, or you find them first thing in the morning. And here's what, here's one that we all have in common, it's keys. You know, those keys, those pesky keys that we may place someplace else. Now I know right now they have those activated voices and sync technology. So to take care of that and even smart apps to remind us when we need to hydrate. But what, there's one thing for sure um, that has not changed. It's how men and women handle this type of stress and critical thinking um, differently. Um, and I'll give you an example from my own personal life. My husband, dear one, um, usually goes to a statement on lost items and it goes something like this honey sweetheart what did you do with my keys where are, where's my shirt that i wanted to wear um i can't find it uh so you get the idea for us women we pile up our stress and our criticism and then we have to have an emotional release and then we'll we need to talk it out For men, on the other hand, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to listen about it. Uh, They don't want to um, have any part of it. It's hard to stay focused. And you both, as you're trying to do this, as a couple, you find yourself exhausted. You're falling into bed, and there's you don't even just barely brushed your teeth and washed your face. Uh, Sex, sex is on the back burner. Um, But that's another topic for another show. So how do we lighten up our criticism? That's the focus for this show. And how how do we bounce back quicker? These bounce back stress, we've all heard them. We've all heard them to, to stop, pause, take a moment, and breathe. Well, I gotta tell you, quite honestly, that never worked for me until I read something. Um, in a book, and I'm sorry, I still can't recall that book. Um, but it was it was long a uh, long ago. I can't boot that up. But the takeaway from what I read in the book was this: three breaths, one breath through my nose, and as I, uh, I and as I breathe out through my nose, smile, and I repeat that. Two more times, so that's three times. Smiling as I exhale, there are no thoughts, believe me, can enter the mind. Tried it over and over again, and the only thing I'm concentrating on is one slow, easy breath in and exhaling, smiling as I'm exhaling through my nose. Um, My stress begins to lessen. Uh, The critical thoughts uh, tone down. And it's crazy, but yeah, it really does work. Remember, criticism and stress are often temporary, and they're coming to us for a very important reason, to challenge us or to learn something new. So being aware of our your own unique um, response to stress or criticism um, you get to know where you begin to feel that because as I, I saw just briefly one a commercial, I believe it was for an insurance company. It says, remember uh, that your mind and your body are related. That's, not, that's the one thing I really believe in is that what you feel in your mind or what your thoughts are, you'll feel it in your body. It has a physical component and a physical component. A symptom in your body has an emotional component uh, that will affect you. So uh, I'm glad to see that coming into more popular awareness. Remembering that when we receive our criticism, we will feel it, our stress, we will feel it someplace in our body. Okay. Uh, So I want you to think about this because this is a great place for us to pause and we'll come back to some 
physical places you may feel it in your body so remember you've been listening to it's all about you with me your host dr martha coming to you live from bbm global network and we'll find out where we feel criticism and stress in our bodies stay tuned Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomenon while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Wait No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Wait No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Wait No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Wait No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back to It's All About You, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I am your host, Dr. Martha. Before the break, we were talking about to, that we have a response to stress and criticism in our, in our physical body, and that how our mind uh, ha- elicits a physical response and our body elicits an emotional response. So... And I asked you to kind of think about that. So I'm going to share with you uh, just a little bit of what I've learned over the years about my own recognition. I will feel it across my shoulders. There is a tightness, but um, there is more intense uh, tightness and the shoulders are differentiated, whether it's the right side or the left side. When the... um, heavy tightness is on the right side, that's personal stress uh, for me and criticism that I have to look at. If it's on the left side, it is office stress and criticism. How we handle it, our response to it is really a gift to our future happiness. Because remember, I said that criticism and stress are tied also to happiness. Criticism alerts us. Um, And it can alert us to challenge and danger, or it can alert alert us to that this is an opportunity. opportunity. And when we're alerted to that, it triggers a hormone release, which is adrenaline. And that will help us focus and think more clearly. Now, consider the other contagions of happiness. That's a balance to stress and criticism and research has also shown that happiness is equally as contagious. So what do I mean by that? Um, well, according to some of the, some of the uh, research coming out of Facebook, somewhere between one and two billion posts that are positive and have emotional positive responses to it are very contagious and it extends out to spouse, to family, to friends, and to co-workers. You get the idea that it would be contagious. So, you know, I'm thinking about that. Well, I don't have a lot of time that I post on anything. Um, 
the and and I need to have something for myself that's easy. Well, guess what? There's an easy and quick happiness booster plan that you can do. And it, and it presents like this. Uh, you have to be present. So that means you you know be be awake and be present and stretch. Just stretch three times. If we all have had pets or if we all do have pets, we've noticed it, whether it's a gerbil, whether it's a hamster, whether it's a, a, a dog or a cat. Notice that when they m- begin to move after inactivity, what do they do first? They stretch. And they normally do three stretches that will include a yawn uh, and a stretch at the same time. You get the idea. So we need to learn how to just stretch and be in the now moment. That's being mindful. Um, Three breaths each one ending with a smile. Now, you can do that together or simultaneously, or you can do them apart. It doesn't take a lot of time. Um, There are other things that we can be mindful of. It's sounds and it's music, our breathing. Is it light inside and outside? And drawing our focus on um, simple things. Um, and um, a simpler thoughts. Uh, for example, I just had to do um, some uh, continuing education hours, which I completed, yay, and sent them in. Um, but you, uh, there's also a test. And so t- uh, take it down to a small thought process. Um, if I fail my test, and if you happen to be in school, you might fail your entire class. That m- might be what you're thinking about, but it's not. You're simply just taking a test. I'm reading all of the information material and getting ready to take the test for my CEUs, and that's all I need to think about, not whether I'm going to pass or fail uh, uh, to have them registered. So make it smaller. Think about what excites you. Is it an activity that you're looking forward to or that you're going to do later? Is it a scene, uh, a serene scene, maybe a patio area or, um, you know, a favorite painting? Okay. Uh, And keep those thoughts running through your mind daily when you start feeling it. Um, Rupert is um, a poinciana tree that's outside my office area and gorgeous. It's been around. It's an older tree uh, and blooms up uh, uh, perfectly, but it doesn't bloom all the time. A lot of the time it's bare, a lot of the time as now some of the new leaves are coming out. But just thinking about that tree in whatever state it is makes me happy. Um, Find out what is working for you to build your own emotional account with, is it the kind words, is it kind actions? Uh, Be careful with your relationships and pay attention to them. Don't take them for granted. According to the Mayo Clinic, we need them uh, to be nurtured and we need to be nurtured and appreciated or just be glad that these people are that situation is in your life. The other thing is practice, 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 practice. Yep. Practice, practice, practice consistently. Okay. Wait a moment. Every, even the most routine things change in our life. A great example of this um, that I did when I was supervising graduate students was uh, the film Smoke. Um, The title character was played by Harvey Keitel. And his character owned a shop um, on a corner And he would go outside every day at the same time from the same angle in all types of weather and in every season and each morning uh, for years. So that means uh, for, for every year he did this, he would have 352 photos at that precise time. 
on a glance when he, when he shared that with one of the other characters all of the photos appeared to be the same so people would race through them and think he's like was a little crazy for doing this but Harvey Keitel's character told one person to stop and really look at it and really look at it and find a moment that would be happy and serene. This is a great place for us to pause. And we're going to pick this same topic up on the other side is like how to find our happiness and keep it there um, in stressful situations and days. So we're going to take a break. You've been listening to It's All About You, coming to you live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with your host, Dr. Martha, and we'll pick this up on the other side. Sensitive, beautiful, feminine, and devotional. These are just some of the words to describe the art of male feminist artist Kimberly Berg, creator of the website IsisRising.net. Mr. Berg's paintings are designed to inspire and awaken the ancient goddess within. He feels that artists have an important role to play in changing the patriarchal world we live in, with a unique ability to create a visual image that can inspire viewers to reinvent themselves. These feminine images create a visual connection to a woman's primal roots, her relationship to nature, and her goddess-based spirituality. Both men and women can benefit from a deeper respect and understanding of what it means to be a woman in attunement to her inner being. Go to IsisRising.net to view the works of male feminist artist Kimberly Berg and be inspired. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network. And you've been listening to It's All About You. Before the break, we were uh, talking about how to keep our happiness in, even in the most critical and stressful moments. And I was talking to you, sharing you that we're, everything is changing. Um, we have to practice all of that and that our most routine things do change. Uh, and I shared with you uh, the movie titled Smoke. Well, you know, Happiness is found in the moment, in the present. It's almost like uh, we all know or have heard of the serenity prayer. And the basic part of that is to know what we can change and know what we can change and to know the difference. Happiness does not hide from us. It is us. We often hide from happiness. We, uh, The more we try to separate from something that is stressful or critical, the more, and it's, it's, it's there, the more we connect with that stress or that critical statement, say news or, um, you know, reviews or whatever, the more we try to find happiness, the more it slips through our fingers. Uh, so we recall the, um, the phrase that was coined by Oprah. She said, um, Attitude of gratitude. She coined that phrase, and it's great, right? It still holds true today. So start to think what you are grateful for. I am grateful for, and fill in the blank. I am grateful for um, 
a hot cup of coffee in the morning. Uh, I am grateful for that hot cup of coffee that was made for me. This will build a sense of contentment that is the that established the biggest foundation for happiness, which is contentment. Um, you know, more people will strive for happiness. Uh, they will set their standards so high, they're bound to be disappointed when it's not met. Um, and this will make us difficult and present us with more difficulty to actually feel happiness when we have set our standards so high. So an otherwise pleasant situation does not become uh, pleasant. The question that pops in is, do we think we have become numb to the smaller joys and the smaller happiness of every day day like? Like um, smiles... Uh, or random acts of kindness, a door being held, the elevator being uh, being held for us. So think about that. From the journal, I had read from the Journal of Happiness Studies, and there is a journal that's entitled that. Um, it is found that we spend most of our time on activities that will make us more competent, efficient, or social. We are briefly unhappy when we're doing that and learning something new and working on these activities. And we get from that, when we're we're consistent with that, a long-term bump, a happiness bump. So temporary unhappiness may cause short-term stress and criticism, but it gives us a big bump in the middle. This is a great place for us to put a pause And uh, you've been listening to, it's Dr. Martha uh, uh, coming to you live from BBM Global Network. And we'll pick up just a small sample on the other side. You've been listening to It's All About You with your host, Dr. Martha Latz. Join us next week as we explore solutions and resolutions to some of your most challenging moments on Dr. Martha Latz, It's All About You. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.